Hello, everyone. This is Rob Golfie with Remax, the Golfie team. Welcome to the Golfie Real Estate Show, Hamilton Edition with host Rick Zamprin. Good morning. Yes, happy to be on board once again with another jam-packed show of exciting content that we're going to talk about today, including a new population growth milestone in Canada. We're going to talk about listing prices now online for you to see, or actually not only listing prices, but sold prices online for you to see. The idea of the 15-minute city. I had a chance to chat with the president of REMAX Canada not too long ago about his idea for how this could solve Canada's housing crisis. We're going to talk about what some landlords, especially those in Toronto, are trying to do to woo renters with a number of freebies. We're going to get into some real estate agents using show, social media to sell properties to younger buyers. And if we do have some time at the end of the program, we're going to talk about a very interesting scenario that a Hamilton couple found itself in in relation to an Airbnb in town. Don't forget to call the number one REMAX team in Canada, the Golfie team, to get your home sold and fast. 905-575-7700. Online, robgolfie.com. Rob, G-O-L-F-I dot com. And you can also follow the Golfie team on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as well. Well, we also have some statistics we're going to get to as well. But before we do that, I understand you have a very intriguing story about your real estate life this week, Rob. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's so uh, last week, uh, th this uh, uh, Wednesday, I left to go to uh, Lake Batiste uh for fishing with friends you know uh friends from where i i live that i've uh you know um met through uh, hockey with our kids i've been met friends for probably over 20 25 years and 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 my bet one of my best buddies my best man at my wedding so we're all together and we're we're going up there so but the story starts as they left uh the morning uh, on Wednesday. And I, I, I always like going myself with my own vehicle in case I have to get back for some reason. But really the reason is <laughs> I'm not a fisherman. So coming back, I always, I always have something to do. I have to say uh, like a day earlier usually. So uh, as I'm, dri I'm driving a trailer up there, uh, we had tons of firewood and everything. So I had all the, like a lot of supplies, of the trailer with the vehicle I was driving. And um, so I rush out and I leave uh, about three o'clock from, uh, from uh, Grimsby and so as I'm driving I'm, I'm on highway 24 I think it is or 28 and I got a quarter tank so I pass and I'm hitting uh, like um, ap apsy absolutely I think what they call it and I said oh, you know what? I got a quarter tank I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till I see another gas station and I will fill up you know what there's not too many gas stations there so, so, and I am, I am praying, I am praying, please get me to the next gas station. And there is no gas station in sight and I'm driving and driving. And you know, when you see you're on empty and it shows, I, you know what? It's amazing how far you can go on empty. I'm going to tell you. So there's a lot of reserve there. There's a lot of reserve. I was, so anyway, so I'm driving, I run out of gas anyway. So I wasn't too far from this gas station. Um, so I end up getting a ride and you're not gonna believe it. Somebody pulled over and said, Hey, do you need help? Which was nice. They drove me to the, this little village had a gas station, but they close at five o'clock. This was at, at, uh, like six 30. So anyway, we waited, the guy shows up there by random at the gas station just to check something oh, out. Wow. And I said, Hey, I, I, can you help me out? I, do you have a Jerry can that, you know, so he helped me out. We drove to the car. We filled it up. I went back to his gas station, filled up. He opened it up for me to, to fill up. Very nice, very nice. Um, and then, uh, so then I get to my, uh, uh, my friends where they were. I, I was supposed to bring ketchup. I didn't have ketchup. And uh, they were a little disappointed because they, they made some uh, home-cooked fries there. So they didn't have any ketchup. But anyway, so we go fishing the next day. So I'm, you know, uh, th uh, this was Thursday. So then I'm uh, busy with the phone in the morning because I'm catching up on different things and stuff like that. So we're on the boat. So we have two boats, three guys on one and my, my buddy and I on the other. And I'm on the phone and I could tell I'm driving him crazy. He's like, get this. Like, I, go, I don't know why I ended up with you on this boat anyway. But I, I was on the phone, you know, <laughs> catching up calls and people were calling. So anyway, so I ended up losing my fishing rod because I was sitting on the edge. Ooh. And we were moving, I don't know, and it fell. And I looked in the water and, and the water wasn't that deep. It was probably maybe 15 feet deep there. Uh, and I'm going, I see the rod going. And I had a, I had like 
three seconds to make a decision. Do I jump in and get it? Because I had a, I, I did have an extra uh, set of clothes in, in the in the boat with me that I could get changed. And I'm like, ah, I don't know what the temperature of the water is. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to just hold back for it was only a $35 fishing rod. I think my lure was more expensive on that rod than uh, the fishing rod. <laughs> so so that so anyway, after that, uh, calls were caught up and everything. I did catch a fish. It was probably the smallest <clears throat> fish. The fish was as as wide as my hand. So, and that was, <laughs> so anyway, it was just, uh, it was, a it was a wild, uh, uh, four days and, uh, it was good with, uh, with friends. I'm not the fisherman of all those guys. They are. So mm-hmm. they, I guess I'm asked because I'm the connection with all those guys, <laughs> but <laughs> so we got to bring Rob because, you know, uh, well, you know, he's, it's, if it wasn't for him, we all would not know each other. So <laughs> it's like, right. it's one of those things that I'm, uh, I'm kind of, uh, uh, allocated in there as a, as a, okay, he's not a fisherman, but we'll bring him in anyway. It's okay. But anyway, but the market, um, is, uh, we don't have the full stats yet that, that came in, but I just brought some, uh, some, some, uh, stats in. And, um, so like, and this is based on like, um, up to the 29th of, um, of, uh, June, but, uh, unit numbers are down. Average sale price uh, month over month hasn't gone up that much uh, in, in mm-hmm. Hamilton. So uh, unit numbers are down pretty well everywhere except, uh, yeah, everywhere. But uh, fi- but I find um, in Niagara, oh, my, it, it is tough to sell a house there right now in Niagara. Like, it's just moving slowly. And uh, it's, just, uh, it's just a grind. And um, so I don't know if the interest rates are making effect. But um, mm-hmm. I do feel that uh, in, they're going to raise the interest rate in the next, uh, I think it's on the 6th or the 12th of, of July that they're going to do the announcement. And just because they got to control this inflation, they've got to control it. Um, and so all areas, Burlington, um, the average sale price, uh, uh, unit numbers are down. Uh, in all areas, unit numbers are all down in all areas, uh, month over month. But we'll have the final numbers in uh, in a, uh, next uh, n- uh, next week um, with mm-hmm. with everything. I mean, just looking at the Niagara numbers, it's really interesting to note, and I'm focused on the median sale price that you know in, in January of this year. So you know, six months ago it was at five eighty six five. And it went up to 634, down to 629, up to 665, down to 657, up to 660, 660, 665 this month. It's been a roller coaster in Niagara. And from a sales perspective, they had a steady climb pretty much up until May. And then it has come down this month. So Niagara's been, as you mentioned, a really tough market. Is in uh, Apart from the interest rates, are homes priced to sell there? Like 665 is a pretty decent number compared to what they were going for in January. Yeah, it, it, it is. And uh, it's just, it's just hard. Like it, it like it's just cooled off. And, and I think it's just the housing prices are, st- are climbing and, and people are just like holding off and the buyers are, uh, aren't sure. Like they, they had this confidence level that uh, for a few months and now boom, and they just, you know, it's like they, they're cautious now again. And uh, mm-hmm. and so that's what's kept the prices a uh, little little stronger. Like the Hamilton market um, is better than the, the Niagara market. And, uh, and and same thing with Burlington. But it's just it's just it's just there's uh, to me as a realtor, there's uncertainty in the market just because the government is trying to figure out what to do. Like if they increase the interest rates, it's going to slow inflation it'll 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 mm-hmm. control it but it's also going to cause a lot of problems to a lot of homeowners out there that are getting the renewal on their on their mortgages and um and like like i was reading in uh, in the paper it was on the news that they were saying that like millionaires in toronto that were that bought houses for like four or five million dollars a couple years ago two three years ago the renewals are coming up and their mortgages were 15,000 a month which is a lot of money as it is are jumping up to 25,000 a month and they're losing wow. them because they're getting choked and and so obviously the more you can afford the 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 bigger the bigger you are the bigger the fall and um so anyway 
but yeah, like it's it 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 it, it you don't know how to win in this situation. Like the like the government raise interest rates to control inflation, but but now you're hurting a lot of people, uh, uh, not able to afford their houses anymore. Two other things I wanted to point to, and you know, looking at Burlington. They had a $200,000 jump in the median sale price from January to February, and it has been relatively steady since 950, 955, a million 68, a million 45, a million 54 this month. Relatively flat in terms of sales numbers as well, pretty much from March to, to June. And in Hamilton, we've had a steady increase in the sale price, the median sale price, from 720 at the start of the year to about 750 for the next four months and now at 775 and with the sales numbers pretty much in the 500 600 you know may was the big month 783 in in saying all that we are in the summer now so there should be a slowdown uh, of sorts i mean traditionally the summer is slower than than the spring or the fall right absolutely you're right and and you know what and and the thing is because we've we're not doing the numbers that we're used to. Like we're hoping that we do the 2021 numbers. Um, but that was a good year. Now I'm, I've been looking at 2021, which was a fantastic year. 2022 in the first four months was a great year. So, and I just met up with one of the largest brokers, uh, of Remax in the world. Uh, and they own, uh, you know, offices all over Toronto and northern uh, north and north of the province Ottawa and he said to me he goes Rob we're we're looking at numbers based on 2020 he, he says that's the normal year 2020 and we're based in like so if we're doing better than 2020 then we're then we're progressing so they basically wiped out two years and they're and he goes you should be looking at that too because he goes you're beating yourself up too much <laughs> every month trying to beat when those get those numbers that we had 2021 and, and the first quarter of 2022. Well, earlier this month, Canada officially hit 40 million residents, a new milestone in this country. As of April 1st, StatsCan reported that 292,000 uh, people were added to the country's population in the first three months of the year. And that is the highest rate of growth in any first quarter going back to 1972 and immigration is responsible for 98 percent of that 292,000 plus population growth with 40 million people here with many more on the way Rob this is no doubt going to have an impact on the whole supply and demand game oh absolutely now we've got um, we have a million people that came into this country now we're in the middle of where interest rates are, are climbing and uh, builders aren't selling houses as many because people are, you know, are unsure about buying a new house or even buying a house. So, so we're not getting builders building houses right now. So there's a slowdown in there, but there's an increase in immigration. So now these people are looking for rental properties, which is very expensive. Now these people mm -hmm. that immigrate into this country, they're the they're the best savers because they're not into commercial goods or anything. They, they're here. They want to make it in this country. And a lot of them have money, but a lot of them don't if they're, if they're refugees, but they do not buy things not that are not necessary. If they need it, they'll buy it. If they want it, they'll not buy it. That's it. They just said, we don't, we, we'd love to have it, but it's just not in our budget. So, cause their, their main goal is to buy real estate. Now, when you have a shortage, when you have a, 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 an abundance of immigrating people immigrating to Canada and you have interest rates that are high that nobody's buying houses, you're, we're, it, we're going to get a, another bottleneck of people wanting houses and there's going to be another boom. And just like I said, in, in 2026 and 27, we're going to see that happening again because the government's going to probably, you know, fix the interest rates down maybe 4%, 4.5 where it's, you know, which is good um, and or maybe less and you're going to see an influx of people jumping in signing up for five-year term and 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 there's gonna and it's gonna drive the prices up they're already expensive as it is they're gonna be even more expensive coming up in years to come and 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 jobs now yes we're getting labor jobs like for construction and stuff like that but they're not building as many so they're not as busy so they don't i, I it's just uh it's it's good for the good for Canada, but it's also bad for Canada. So how do you, I don't know how, what to say if you win or lose on this, but it, it, 
it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for uh, everybody in the future. Yeah, last year, according to StatsCan, it said that Canada's population growth was 1 million for the first time in its history, which is a, a lot of people. And we know that a lot of those immigrants are workers and they're joining the labor force, but all, they all need a place to live. So whether that's homes or the rental market, it's just creating a tighter um, a grip on that supply issue. Oh, absolutely. And that's why there's basement apartments everywhere. And, and Vancouver has been doing this. Uh, like for 40 years or more. Like I remember going there uh, at, uh, in 1986 and, uh, and actually my buddy moved out there uh, probably in the uh, late eighties and um, they had a basement apartment in their house when they bought there. That was the only way they could afford it. And they basically, and he's till this day today, he still has uh, whether he's, switched houses but he still has a basement apartment in his uh prop on on his house and and that's the only way vancouverans can afford a house so now it looks like that is spilled over to ontario is spilled over to the niagara hamilton halton uh areas all all around and so everybody's gonna have to have an apartment in their basement to for to afford a house I, and I can see it. And, you know, I know Hamilton has uh, tweaked the rules in that regard. And, you know, a lot of people are looking to the rental market first because they're looking at the price of homes saying, well, I can't do that. I can't afford this down payment. I can't qualify for this uh, for this mortgage rate. Um, I, I got to dip into the rental market. So having more basement apartments, more laneway homes, as they yeah. call them, is only going to alleviate that strain. So it, it, who it, knows how, how long it's going to take us to get there. It, it is. And that's the only way. And that's why the government's allowing these uh, basement apartments and laneway, laneway homes and everything else. It's the only way mm -hmm. to, to solve because obviously they're not building enough homes, but they have to find another another way of doing it. And and this is probably um, what what will solve a little bit of that, that, so, that problem. So now... We're going to have an influx of this. We're going to, people are going to be able to uh, put apartments down there because of the uh, population growth. And they'll put a hold on it. Now, all these people that have apartments in their basements, they'll be uh, uh, grandfathered in in the future saying, okay, no more of those anymore. We caught up. So whoever's got those uh, are lucky that you can keep use, doing that. that. That's been grandfathered in. And, uh, and then anything new down the road will will not be able to be a, a, an apartment in the basements and they're making lots smaller now like the lots are smaller when they're building new houses it, you, you barely fit two cars in the driveway now let alone you know can you imagine you have two car uh, uh, four cars for every house on the, uh, it's going to be too much you have two cars on the street two cars in the driveway i mean everybody needs access to come and go whenever they want at different hours of the day and um so you're going to have it's just going to be uh, it's just going to be gridlock everywhere, just like it is downtown Hamilton. Like, like you ever driven? Uh, I and I lived down downtown Hamilton at one time. You're circling around. You you try to get home fast, just because not because you want to get home. You want to get home fast so you can get that parking spot on the street if you don't have a driveway. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and it's just yeah. uh, it's it's crazy. From an investor standpoint, do you see you know given where the rental market is right now? Do you see the rise of the duplex coming back? Uh, absolutely, it's the only way people can afford it. They're gonna, you're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of houses uh, converted. On I, I remember 14 Chatham Street. I bought that uh, in the uh, um, like 1980. I think it was 89 or 88. I converted that into a duplex. I had, you know what, it was perfect. It just had to cover one wall, put a, a little mini kitchen upstairs, and uh, plumbing was already there. And I think it was, um, I, I, it wasn't hard to uh, to convert because I think the because it just was easy to do. And I I finished the mm -hmm. basement of it. And it's, I'll, I'll, I won't forget 14 Chatham Street. I got right there in uh, in off of Lock Street in Hamilton. I converted to a duplex, and I think it's been converted back to a single family home. I'm not sure, but uh, but the I finished the attic. The attic was finished, so I had four finished levels in this whole house when I uh, when I when I bought it. So adding the sold price of listings on realtor.ca and I believe this is the first province to do this a good idea bad idea where do you stand on this I, I think it's a, I, I it doesn't bother me and, and if it I, and I don't think it should bother any realtors either because it's educating uh, the consumer so when I walk into an appointment and somebody's looking at selling their house if they have knowledge of the neighborhood that they're in, 
if they have knowledge of the neighborhood and they want want to know what you know what to sell their house at they'll know sometimes we walk in and their house is worth 800 but they want a million dollars for their house well if they know three four sales happen in their neighborhood around eight eight hundred they're going to be a little bit more respectful not respectful but they're going to be more like understanding yeah yeah we saw that some of these houses sold for this much money a lot of people do not want to sell their own house that is a get for sure. Like people do not want to deal with that. They don't want to deal with, you know, talking to the consumer or talking to anybody. They just want somebody to take care of that for them and they can just go on with their life without having the hassles and trying to negotiate or trying to figure, you know, call for feedback or anything like that. But I do like Toronto, they, they had an, uh, they had a problem with this years ago and it, nothing changed. I mean, I don't think it changed. I think it's fine. I mean, if our real estate board wanted to change and uh, add uh, sale prices on to realtor.ca, it wouldn't bother me one bit because I don't think it's going to hurt the, our business as a realtor. And I think it's good for the consumer to have knowledge of what the, uh, the, the market's going on in their neighborhood. I mean, it's, you know, to me, it's, it, 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 I'm fine with it. What do you think, Rick? Well, you know, I, I like the transparency and it, it removes the guessing game, right? Especially, you know, when you have someone uh, putting their house up for sale on your street and the house, you know, sells for whatever the price is. And you ask the homeowner or the home seller, hey, what'd you get for it? And they tell you a number, you, you, you can't guarantee that that's the number. They might be embellishing that. And I know we've talked about this in the past and your experiences, more often than not, they do embellish the number because they want to look good. Yeah, absolutely. and so I like the transparency. Yeah, and the other thing is, people when they see a house go up for sale, they think that whatever the price they were asking is what they got. So that's what they entrench and and put put into their head. But meanwhile, it isn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I to me, I, I I'm I'm fine with it. I'm good with it. Like I'm confident in my business, and uh, and I don't think it'll hurt one bit at all in any realtor's business. I think it's good for the consumer. I agree. Uh, here's an interesting one. And I, and I chatted with uh, Christopher Alexander. He's the president of Remax Canada about this oh, a week or so ago about the 15 minute city. It, it, it's not a new idea, but he kind of jumped on it uh, saying that this is a good idea. The 15 minute city or 15 minute neighborhood, which basically when you boil everything down, uh, have housing, schools, healthcare, parks, your workplace should be within a 15 minute walk or bike ride or, or, or ride on the bus. And while it may be pie in the sky thinking, there is a lot of analysis behind this because according to numerous surveys, we spend just way too much time in rush hour traffic in gridlock driving to the workplace. And for many people, they are hundred percent remote. Some have, you know, hybrids kind of work schedules now, but this idea of a 15 minute city I think on the surface sounds amazing. I think if we all lived in a community like this, it would be fantastic. But given what we already have, it's hard to implement this. Would it not be? It would be because people want to live in different neighborhoods. They don't want that specific neighborhood. And um, people want to live near family. People want to live near. It just, I think it's it's tough to to implement this thing. I, I think you. I think certain people can. And but a lot of people can't. It's it, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people like and like like for instance, a lot of people live in Hamilton, but they work in Toronto. I mean, that's a big commute. And um, yeah. now those people in Hamilton that that work in Toronto, you think they they don't want to go to Toronto because it's too expensive and and they can't afford it. And so like it's just the affordability ability level and also the neighborhoods they want and the friends and family that they want to live near. It just I I think it is a to me I think it is a big pie in the sky. I think there are people that do live near their work and they they're close to all the amenities, but not but I think not not as many as they they'd like and not as many as they think uh that, that they can do i i can certainly attest to the uh, the benefits of living in a 15 minute neighborhood i am 15 minutes from work i am less than 15 minutes from you know my when my kids went to school uh shopping districts i'm i'm within the 15 minute neighborhood so i get the benefits the quality of life the um uh, not being in gridlock is always a you know a fun thing uh, protecting the environment, of course, driving less, 
you're you're not you know spilling out those harmful emissions so yeah thumbs up all around but i agree with you this is this is tough sledding this is going to be really tough to implement for most people who are already in a home or in a rental unit to, to be 15 minutes especially from work it's going to be tough to do that would be uh, I, let's move on to oh sorry go that, ahead but that would be a good survey to find out how many people like let's say in hamilton or burlington that actually live and work in in their same city which is which i think i think that would you say 50 percent of the population maybe in hamilton yeah, that's, would say that's a good one would would live would live and work in uh in the city i'd say probably what 50 it's got to be more than 50 percent. i would assume i don't I, it's hard. I i would I, I would think not by much because given you know in 2017 we have the huge gta influx and really ever since a lot of people in the gta have moved here and they still work there i would assume um, so I think, yeah, maybe 40, 40, 45 percent of the population is commuting. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're seeing thousands of cars on the roads every day leaving the city and then they come back. Um, so yeah, that, yeah, that would be a very interesting study for sure. It would be a good study. Well, here's an interesting story. It comes out of Toronto and it has to do with landlords in that city. And because we know a lot of people from the GTA in Toronto especially have moved here to Hamilton or to Burlington, uh, some down to Niagara Way. A lot of Toronto landlords are saying, well, wait, we still have all these condos and, and other rental suites that we want to rent out. How are we going to do this if everyone's leaving? Well, they're kind of thinking outside the box, and they're giving away um, options of free rent, uh, thousands of dollars in gift cards, Wi-Fi. I mean, you name it, they're dipping into the box of goodies to entice people to rent their spaces uh what do you think about this Rob? i you know what it, it's not new i use it too sometimes to uh rent certain uh units that i have and I, i'll offer listen um the uh, your hydro and your wi-fi is included uh, you know i bump up the rent uh, a bit mm -hmm. and uh so that uh they don't have to worry about they just have to worry about one one bill, which is the rent, and that's it. So they don't, and then I don't have the hassles of, uh, you know, somebody, uh, you know, uh, getting the uh, hydro meter in their name and taking it out and all that kind of stuff. So, and uh, yeah, I, I, I offer that. And uh, you can ask for a little bit more rent, but you'll, you'll get a tenant and you'll get a tenant that'll stay longer too. So I believe like now these guys are worried about people moving out of the city and hopefully they stay. Yeah. But me, I, I try to get a little bit more rent, and I rent it fast, and I get I get a long-term renter there because they kind of like the idea is just to pay one rent, and they get everything's included. It's a great thing. I think a lot of uh, landlords do it, and, uh, and, and, and the tenants love it because they don't have to worry, worry about any other uh, bills that they have. They just get whatever. They just have their rent. That's it. They don't have to worry about gas, hydro, or, or any uh, Wi-Fi or anything like that. Very interesting. You know, Hamilton has a rental, I would say, crisis. I mean, a real issue in terms of um, the supply and the price tag not being, you know, not, not meshing with a lot of people looking for a place to stay. While as, you know, just down the highway, we have landlords in Toronto practically begging people to rent their space. Does it just come down to cost? It costs too, but like you can get more rent if, if, you, uh, if you offer that. Like, I mean, it, it, it's a catch-22. But yeah, like I mean, Toronto. I mean, th there's a lot of empty units there in Hamilton. Uh, I mean, they're scrambling here. Like, I mean, people are afraid to leave their current residence uh, that they're renting yeah. because they're not going to fi find another place. Now, there's this one, one, one uh, guy that uh, he's got his place up for sale, and he's had them in there for over 20 years. All the rents in this complex, and I think there's uh, six of them, a small six, and they could all the rents could be more than double. Now he's going to have a hard time selling it because he's not going to because nobody's going to buy it because the rents are low. The other thing mm -hmm. is, uh, these people are ne are never going to move. They're going to die there because they know they can't find uh, a place that equals to that rent they have. They're going to have to pay more than double for the rent. So so basically, this guy's stuck. He's stuck uh, owning this place, and as each person leaves. Uh, he's gonna re has to renovate it and get the rents up to the level. That's why landlords now they're 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 putting uh, rental increases every year. They're saying, hey, you know, a lot of them didn't do it before. They just say, hey, listen, you're paying your rent on time. I I like you, you like me, and and you don't give me any hassles. Your rent is gonna stay the same. Well, ten years go by, and now because 
that that rent is so low, it's affected the the price of the building that you're in or 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 whatever. So now the landlord wants to sell. He's like, wait a minute, I've given you, I've done you a favor, but guess what? I'm paying the price now because I want to sell this building and I can't get the yeah. price that I want. So that that's the 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 crisis here in in Hamilton and, and nobody nobody's leaving their apartments and and people are and the ones that are getting kicked out oh i feel sorry for them because the next place they move to if they they can go from a house then they go to an apartment for the same amount of money so they're and so that's kind of like a downgrade for the same price it's tough it's tough for a lot of renters out there right now uh, absolutely. One final thought on this uh, Toronto landlord situation. There's a 236 suite rental community that opened in the spring. And those who committed to buy or rent or lease, however you want to put it, uh, before last September 30th were entered into a draw to win up to one year of free rent plus $5,000 in gift cards to some neighborhood shops who I guess all pitched in with gift cards. And all told, it would be worth 28000 uh, Five hundred dollars for one lucky leaseholder. So that is a pretty sweet job of wooing uh, those people to get in on the uh, the rental market. Okay. When we come back, we're going to talk about how realtors are using social media to sell to younger buyers, and a Hamilton couple caught in a web uh, in regards to an Airbnb. We'll talk about that when the Golfy Real Estate Show Hamilton Edition continues on nine hundred CHML. Okay, and one more six. Last go round here on the Golfy Real Estate Show, Hamilton Edition on 900 CHML. Rick Samprin with Rob Golfy, sales representative, Remax Escarpment Realty, the Golfy team. If you want to sell your house or you are in the market to buy a house, call the number one Remax team in Canada. The Golfy team, 905-575-7700. That's 905-575-7700. Online at robgolfy.com. That's Rob, G-O-L-F-I dot com. You can follow the Golfy team on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. And for an instant home estimates, go to golfyhomevalue.com. That's golfyhomevalue.com. We've had social media around for well, the, more than 10 years now, uh, various uses for it, some good, some bad. It is uh, it is a great marketing tool in the toolbox for realtors as well. And, and now as we're seeing more and more younger buyers trying to get into the market, more and more realtors are using social media to connect with millennials and Gen Z and, and, and those younger age demos. Um, is this a worthwhile strategy? Are we seeing the gains being made from these social media posts? Absolutely. It is the new generation. I'm actually the old old generation where we have all the marketing uh, on in the papers and the streets with the billboards and stuff like that. This is a new generation of, uh, of, of marketing homes. Um, and, 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 and some of these realtors, they're doing a fantastic job on social media and we're doing a, we're doing a, a, a lot of social media posts and everything like that. So we're getting a lot of, uh, uh, of, of people, uh, looking at our stuff online and we know that is the future and it was, it, it is the future now. And, uh, and I knew that five years ago and 10 years ago that you had to do this. And, and the thing is a lot of these young agents, they're coming out the gate and they're like whammo. They're like, they're, they're like becoming successful out the gate because they're so good on their social media. And then some of the agents out there that have been in business for 10 years and they're still young, they just don't have that. Uh, on their social media and which is a struggle for them. So we have a combination of both. We're, 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 we're on social media all the time and we have the print marketing and, and, and everything else online that we're doing, but uh, definitely it is important and b people are doing a lot of business because of it. It is. Uh, it does offer a unique way to connect with people who are, are looking for a home. That is for sure. Whether it's filters or stickers or creative videos uh, it is a neat way to connect to uh, uh, buyers and, and sellers, that, that's for sure. Last one for you, and this is a great one. You forwarded uh, this one on earlier this morning about uh, a really interesting story of a Hamilton couple who at all hours of the night would have people knocking on their door trying to get into their house, and, and these homeowners are thinking, well, what's going on? And at one point, there were realtors you know, just walking in the front door. And you might be thinking out there, what's, what, what is happening here? Well, this particular home shares uh, an identical address 
to a home in Stony Creek. And that home in Stony Creek at one point was for sale and is now an Airbnb. So people thinking they're going to the Airbnb in Stony Creek are now going to this home on the Hamilton Mountain. And the homeowners, uh, you know, rightfully so, are very concerned about this. This is a wild story. Yeah. So what's happening is people are, are Googling uh, on maps and saying, OK, I have to go to the, I think the streets on Alpine Street or something like that. And well, their address comes up on, on the mm-hmm. mountain. And meanwhile, this place is in Stony Creek. So and, and, and the reason why this problem is, is because when we amalgamated with uh, like, you know, like like Waterdown and Ancaster and, and Stony Creek and everything. Google recognizes Stony Creek as Hamilton, and uh, and Hamilton is recognized as Hamilton. Sometimes you know it depends. Sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, on on Airbnb, the um, the guy that's putting the Airbnb up, he should pin it to make sure this is the house. But it's a t- it's mm-hmm. a tough one. There's there's no way about it. Just like this couple, they have a sign on the front. This is not an Airbnb. Go go to the <laughs> other one. Go to the other one. You're at the wrong yeah. location. So. But yeah, it's 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 pretty tough. It's 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 a sad situation. I was really intrigued to learn that post amalgamation, it's been what twenty three years now. Yeah, um, that there are more than six hundred duplicate street names across the city, and it affects nearly thirty four thousand properties. I would have never guessed this issue was that big. I didn't realize it was that big either. Holy smokes, that is a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. So, and, and and that's what makes it confusing for for people out of town. They, they don't know. Like, I mean, like we yeah. know in town Stony Creek. We know the difference between Stony Creek and Hamilton. I mean, we still use the word Stony Creek, even though um, people you could say Hamilton, you can say Stony Creek. It, I mean, regardless. But if you got the same street name in the in the same city, you're you're in trouble. <laughs> Especially a lot of Airbnb. I need to be a on. delivery driver in this city. Oh, no kidding. Driver in this city. no kidding. I would hate to be. Yeah, no you, kidding. Yeah. You ordered this food? No, no, we didn't. Yeah. Go, it's in Stone Creek. Has it been hey, prepaid? Has, has it been prepaid? <laughs> yes, it's ours. <laughs> yes, it's ours. Bring it on in. Yeah. You can listen to our show online through Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and many more. Just search for the Golfy Real Estate Show in your favorite podcast platform. Hit the follow button and you will never miss an episode. Rob, great show as always, and thank you for listening to the Golfy Real Estate Show. We are back next Saturday at 9 on 900 CHML.